welcome to Confirmation Bias, presented by the League Ambassadors. I'm Ambassador Kenny Ken Ken, and the off-season questions for the eight first-round losers in the NBA playoffs are much more complicated than they are for the 14 non-playoff teams. And that's my confirmation bias. I'm Ambassador Junior Blue, and Doc Rivers is an average NBA coach, and he's even worse GM, and that's my confirmation bias. I'm Ambassador Dad, and the Bulls, your coach, the mayor, Fred Hoiberg, cannot be the best shooter on your team. That is my confirmation bias. I'm Brad O, and if Chris Paul wants a shot at a championship, he need to call Jim Lampley's plus one to the barbecue, Popovich. Take a little less money. Get your chance. And that's my confirmation bias. And I'm Ambassador Chef Curry. To all the teams that lost in the first round, be honest with yourself this offseason because the truth shall set you free. And that's my confirmation bias. Welcome to Confirmation Bias, hosted by the League Ambassadors. As a reminder, you can follow us everywhere on social media. That's Twitter, that's Facebook, Instagram. Our handle is at the League AM. Please visit our website, theleagueam.com. Visit our YouTube channel, The League Ambassadors. Not just only visit, but subscribe. Uh, as a reminder, also, Diplomatic Immunity, if you're watching the show live via Facebook Live on the Network Studios page, submit your questions so that we can tackle those at the end of our show. And also, for those of you that are watching live and, and that will listen to our podcast, please visit our website, particularly the Diplomatic Immunity page. That's a place where all the fans can come and they can do long form pieces, short form pieces on whatever's on their mind as it pertains to the world of sports. Shout out to Breezy G for his two Washington Washington Capitals submissions. Uh, and yeah, let's let's get it going. So this is going to be a good show. Uh, start with our hot topic. This past weekend marked the end of round one for the NBA playoffs after the Utah Jazz disposed of the Fele Clippers hmm. in game seven. <laughs> Uh, so our hot topic uh, today is really just about assessing the offseason options and questions for the eight first round losers. Let's work in reverse. Start with the Clippers. Uh, their notable free agents are J.J. Reddick, CP3, Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. Now, a lot of the argument and conversation that we've been hearing in the media has really centered around the fact that the Clippers organization needs to blow up the roster. The problem is it's really not in their control, right? Because these players are all free agents. So the question, first question I got for you guys is what should each of these players do? Start with J.J. Reddick. Should he stay or should he go? <laughs> the market <laughs> is looking very nice for Mr. J.J. Reddick right now. There's a couple teams in in that conference that needs shooters <laughs> really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think he's gone. Yeah. Why not? It's too much money. Yeah. Sometimes it just falls your way, and it fell his way it this year. It fell his way this year. What about CP3? Should he stay, or should he go? They write $200 million on a check. He's staying. Kev? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him stay. I mean, stop running, man. Those demons are right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's got to face him head on. I, I like to see him and uh, at least DeAndre Jordan stay and just add a third piece. The thing is, he has control though. He can, he he can make some decisions for the team because he can 
sit back and wait and see what they do. If he doesn't want Doc there, if he wants Doc there, if he wants them to trade somebody, he has control. I I, I agree with that. I think for him, I think he's not going to be the one that jumps out first. I think he wants to wait to see what the landscape of the Clippers is going to be. So then to that end, Blake Griffin, does he stay? Does he go? Uh, I think <laughs> I think he's gone. Does he go home? Mm. Does that really help? Does that really that help them that much? Yeah, <laughs> somebody else who can't shoot. Right. I'm, I I think Paul definitely stays. Um, you th- regardless, yeah, Paul. you yeah, think, I think Paul stays think regardless? Stays. Forty the thing million they, a year. Though? Here's the thing that here's the thing that's interesting. Also, Blake Griffin leaving. Like, let's say he does leave. It does not give open them any cap. cap. It does not open up cap space. It would be a sign and trade with them. That's what they would do with him. Well, he's a free agent, right? No, he has a player option. He has a player option. Has a player option. But it, they're both expected to opt out. Yeah, but they can they can still, still sign, sign and trade. They can still yeah. sign and they get yeah. I mean, and that's if it's if if the right deal is. I right. I like Miami as, by the way as a destination for Blake Griffin. Oklahoma City, I I'm not too sure about. I like Miami as a destination for him. But all of you guys, Kevin, are you of the opinion that Blake should leave as well? Yeah, I am. Um, I think that experiment there is is over. Um, especially if, with all due respect, if if Doc stays, um, just because he. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't, <laughs> I know Omar like he, but uh, Blake hasn't, his game hasn't transcended to that next level where we all expected with where LeBron is, where Kawhi Leonard is, where Russell Westbrook is. I mean, if it's going to, I think it may help him to get a fresh start. Okay, follow up question to Dad before we go to the next team, the Portland Trailblazers. Is it time for Barmer to part with Doc? I think Doc needs to part with Doc. First, <laughs> let's start with the hairline. Uh, <laughs> I think, I mean, Ding! <laughs> with with all the power that he has, I mean, he's the GM. He's the coach. Yep. The but only question is who, who if if not him, right? That, that that's my only concern. I think I I, I didn't necessarily fight Omar with that. I, you know, he said he was he's been overrated for years, but now I'm I'm on board with that. I think Doc is overrated, but. What else do you go? I mean, where else do you go? Well, that's your job as as an owner when you evaluating your team. You, you don't stick with something that's not working just because you don't think something else is out there. You go read. There's players. I mean, there's coaches out there. Yeah. Somebody there. Kurt didn't have a job before, and now he's a world champion. Yeah, Kurt did have a job, but it just wasn't coaching. He was <laughs> he was comfortable. <laughs> he didn't have a coaching job. <laughs> Let's stay in the Pacific Division and look at the Portland Trailblazers. They were swept. Uh, by the Golden State Warriors. Now, they're offseason. They've got three first-round picks. Uh, they will also are slated to have the highest payroll in basketball. They've got a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. They they raped, oh, they raped the Denver Nuggets in the deal, getting a first-round pick and getting Nurkic. The question I have for you guys is how do they take the next step? And I'll put it to Les. What is it that they need to do to get to, to take the next step? Um, like Dad says, L Dad says, mm-hmm. scouting. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they, Spend money on really, scouting. They really have to hit on these three picks. It's a deep draft, mm-hmm. so they have to hit on these three picks because they locked up so much money with Allen Crabb, oh, um, CJ McCollum, and what's the name? Uh, at the point. That's a lot of money. And, and, Evan, and Evan Turner. And Evan Tur- oh, they God, spent so much money. Yeah. So I mean, they have to hit on these so they can have some kind of price controlled players kevin are you keeping all three of these picks or are you packaging some of these picks with maybe one or two of these high priced players to to not only regulate your cap but also to give because i feel like they they're, they duplicate themselves in a couple of different positions uh, yes. scouting they have a type yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> slight and light <laughs> at the guard position you got dame cj shabazz all around the same size they need a three and d that's what they need if Kev- they're yeah, going to build around the backcourt yep the thing is, they have <laughs> options because they have three first round picks. Sorry, Kev. Go ahead. <laughs> I was, was going to say, I, I do I agree with what Devin said. I, I think that not only are they deep in the same positions, have multiple guys who do the same things, but their their approach, I think, is also their problem. They they take too many bad shots. They don't have much offensive discipline. So I would definitely consider, if I was them, I would consider trying to package those picks to get maybe a, a veteran score in there that can kind of balance them out when Dame and, uh, and McCullum aren't hitting from 40 feet. <laughs> no one get something else that can get in versatility on offense. No one's talking about the defense, though. I think that is a big thing. I mean, Three and D. Their defense improved a lot with Nurkish. They went from being like 23rd overall to, I think, 12th in defensive efficiency. Mm-hmm. Question for you, Devin, before we go to the Grizzlies. Is it time to... 
because McCollum and Lillard, they both suck defensively. And that's putting <laughs> it light. They score a lot of points. They have a lot of offensive talent. Slight and light. Do we break them up? In order, in order, in order to take that next step, I don't, I don't know if that's it's the too option. Soon? I think it's too soon. I, th- I think you need a legitimate wing defender mm-hmm. that can cover up their mistakes, and if you have someone on the back end that can help, because they, they are giving up the cheeks. It's the Ole defense out there on the wing. Okay, Omar, this this shouldn't take long. Memphis Grizzlies. The question I have for you: First of all, they blew their wad, signed Chandler Parsons, and his knee <laughs> promptly gave out. Uh, As expected. All their notable free agents are old. Is Conley Gasol, is that is that foundation, is that good enough for Memphis? Good yes or no? For what? Uh to be better than a first to be better than a first round exit. No. 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 Well. I have something I'd like to add. Yes. Uh it's very brief. Your second best score and defender cannot be forty. Vince Carter. <laughs> Who's gonna play again next year? Who is gonna yeah. play again next year? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> All right, let's move to the Oklahoma City Thunder. They uh, got dealt with pretty easily, actually, which I was a little bit surprised by. Uh, dealt with easily by the Houston Rockets. Um, the question I have, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll start with you, Les, is it that we need to upgrade the supporting cast, or do we need to downgrade Russell Westbrook? Upgrade at all four other positions besides point guard. Okay. Because... They first off, they need shooters. I mean, he would kick out to Roberson, and they say Roberson's gonna get paid this summer. That yeah, he's makes, he's the notable free. Him uh, and Todd, him, Todd Gibson, and Doug McDermott are their notable free agents. They should have built them like they built Houston <laughs> with shooters. He needs it, shooters, it, the, and that would that would work. The missing ingredient, though, and we talked about this before, is you know you cannot discredit Mike D'Antoni's offense. The the space and the flow they have, yes, yeah, shooters would help, but their offensive system is, I mean, it is what it is, and, and they got it. They got exposed. Dev, you, you're shaking your head. What are you thinking? No, I'm just thinking that if they don't surround Russ with shooters, mm-hmm. and I may be in the minority at this. I've, I've talked to a couple of you about this. I think they need like a legit straight up for real like orchestration point guard Ricky, move him Ricky Rubio and move him to the two and let him do what he does because he can still get the same assist same rebounds but in the flow of the offense he's athletic enough to do that at the two he can score off of the wing him coming off of action having someone chase him the whole time mm-hmm. or just off of anything but just bringing the ball up one pick and roll and shoot he, he would be more he would he wouldn't be as tired in the fourth and he'd be still effective and more efficient. He gets lost off ball, though. That's he doesn't problem. do anything. He just stands there. But is that him or is that the offense? And that goes to a point Omar has consistently made, which is I would love to see Russell Westbrook with a real coach. I don't know. But it seems like everyone's on the, upgr- up, uh, everyone's on the upgrade the supporting cast. Yeah, Kev? Yeah, I, that was an interesting point. I definitely agree. Um, and when the one time I, I remember seeing Russell Westbrook play better off the ball was when – he had Reggie Jackson uh, spelling him sometimes or coming into the combo. Granted, Reggie Jackson is no pure point. <laughs> <laughs> he served he, his he purpose, definitely, though. He's definitely not the answer, but we saw that that combo worked. So I, I definitely agree. I think he needs not only uh, a, a system around him that works, but someone that can that can make plays with the ball in their hands. It's not Victor Oladipo. From one transcendent star to another, we go to the Milwaukee Bucks. They got eliminated by the Toronto Raptors in six games. From a personnel standpoint only, and I'll go to you, Omar, for this, are they ready with Giannis, Chris Middleton, and Thon Maker? Are they ready from a personnel standpoint, or is there something missing? Jabari Parker. Wow, so you think he's the missing ingredient? Well, I, th- I think it's Jabari. Can he stay healthy? And can Thon Maker make that next step? If he can make that next step, they're gonna be re- they're gonna be a load to deal with. All right, let's stay in the Central Division. Chicago Bulls. Uh, we all thought it was going one way, <laughs> <laughs> and then Rondo had to break his thumb, and it went that other way. Uh, is this it for Dwayne Wade? I don't know if it's it. But it should be. It should be. Is he a free agent or does he have a player option? No, he, he has a, a player, player option, option and okay. he said he's going to sit and watch and wait. He was like, I don't need, he said, I don't need to ring chase. So, mm-hmm. But I, it, sound, it didn't sound like a guy who was going to retire. No. $23 million or whatever it is. Nah. I think he, he why not just wait to see if, if Hoiberg is coming back. You know, they, no reason for him. Nah, he, he didn't done enough where he can wait. 
Kevin, is Fred should Fred Hoiberg be finished or should he be done? <laughs> <laughs> he should be both. <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta Hawks. Their notable free agent is Paul Millsap, and this is tied to the question that I have, and I'll give it to you, Devin. Should they be because what we saw in the series against Washington, offensively anyway, is that there was a real conflict between having your offense being run on the perimeter through mm-hmm. Tim Hardaway, Schrader, and and guys of that ilk, or do you run it in the interior through Millsap and Howard? So the question is, do you re-sign Millsap, and then who should you be running your offense through? Well, Millsap, although he plays the four, doesn't play in the box like that anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, I mean, they're going to have to pay him. Um, he's 32. Um, the German, uh, Schroeder, mm-hmm. and Timmy are both young 20s. Yep. Uh, Schroeder showed me something in that series. I mean, he didn't always make the, the best decision, but he shows he has something. I think you build around them those guys. Yeah, I mean, Millsap is, is going to be most wanted. He's there's gonna be offers out there for Millsap. Let's throw it to the non Laker fan in the group for this final question. Indiana Pacers hmm. uh, probably should have given Cleveland more of a fight. They failed in that regard. <laughs> if you're Indiana, Kevin Pritchard, what do you do with PG thirteen this summer, Kev? Oh man, I think first off, I would hate to be Mr. Pritchard because I think he. I think they end up losing here. I think Paul George is, I think he's gone. I think he's coming out west for one of those two teams you guys got playing in the Staples Center. Um, I think they're actually going to end up rebuilding for the next three to five years. It's When Paul George leaves, that team is a mess. So then you're saying get ahead of the horse and go ahead and get the best, get the maximum amount with the two teams or with the team that he's interested in going to is what you're saying. I think you try. You try not because to the other option, Because the other option would be, Let's just run it back. He is still technically under contract and try to try to build something around him one more time. I, I think you, you offer him that, that max deal to, to try to get him to stay, but I don't think he will. So you either try to trade him to get something for him, but either way, it's not looking good in Indiana. All right, all right, all right. Let's uh let's get into some black versus blue. Um, we've got a couple of topics we want to talk about. So over this weekend, we had not one, but two drafts. <laughs> uh, of course, we had the NFL draft, but we also had oh my God. the inaugural draft for the Big Three Professional Basketball League, which was created by none other than Ice Cube, featuring former NBA greats, uh, Hall of Famers. It's a three-on-three league, um, and uh, their t- names tied to it like AI, GP, Gervin, Drexler, Dr. Dre, and even uh, Charles Oakley. Um, and <laughs> I'm looking at the list of names of, the, of these people, and this is like the 1990s hoop head almanac right here. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to ask you guys, will this be entertaining at all, hit or flop? Uh, it's fitting that Ice Cube, one of the songs that he's most notorious <laughs> for is No Vaseline. Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I'm glad y'all said it all. <laughs> Used to be hard, now you just mm-hmm. wet and soft. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a flop. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody a well, flop. This is but a flop. It'll be entertaining. I might go to <laughs> right that okay. one, Wait, one no, no, no. that painful way where you're watching something <laughs> die, but you can't. <laughs> like it's it's that's the inter- that's my type of entertainment. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna like to see. I think it's gonna piss it's gonna piss like hoop heads off because you're gonna see like the competitive spirit and verve that you wanna uh-huh. see from your star players today. Even, but the talent level I don't even think you're gonna see that. I think you will. No, I think you're gonna see a twenty four hour fitness, six AM in the morning, <laughs> three on three basketball game. <laughs> Kev, Kev, what you just gonna say? Hey, I'm I'm going to watch. I can't <laughs> lie. I'm going to watch. Yeah, I think it's going to be entertaining, but let's not overlook the fact that this may be a good opportunity for uh for Fox Sports. No, think about it. It's it's their one, their big event that they haven't necessarily had. It's going to be broadcasted during the summer where nobody is watching anything but baseball if you decide to watch that. Um so I think if they can put on a good show, 
proved that they can carry an event like this. You never know. Are you saying yeah. Fox Sports is is, yeah, is they, televising they, it? Yes. Yeah. That's who's televising. Ha 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 ha
Edward Rose that has brought both excitement and controversy to Major League Baseball. I'm going to ask you guys, should Pete Rose be in the Baseball Hall of Fame? So I guess tonight, who am I going to go with? Omar's had a rough week. Kenyon, coin flip, my brother. Call it in the air. Heads or tails? Heads. It is tails, sir. It is tails. It is tails. I'm Omar. Going, I'm going to go with the against, and I'm going to uh, pass to Kenyon to see who goes first. Omar can go first. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Well, Omar... Give me one so second you. here. Let me get this timer. Dev, you give him the signal. All right. Three, two, one. Volunteer. The definition for the word volunteer. It means to offer yourself for an action or service willingly or on your own free will. Volunteer. I'll say it one more time just in case y'all didn't hear me. Volunteer. Pete Rose volunteered not to ever be allowed in the Hall of Fame of his own free will. Pete Rose volunteered. The man said, nah, I don't want to go. He accepted that there was a factual reason for the ban. That's what, why he volunteered, because there was a factual reason for the ban. At that point, he was placed on the baseball's ineligible list. Um, and per baseball rules, if you are on the ineligible list, you cannot be put in the Hall of Fame. He lied about it for years when he was broke. He then wrote a book admitting to only half the truth. He said he only bet when he was a manager, but the truth came out later because the FBI had fouls. Um, they had the betting slips from when he was a player. Um, I mean, that he bet when he was a player. So he, he lied about it more than once, and then he lied about it for years. Even then, it doesn't even matter because as an adult, a man who knows wrong, right from wrong volunteered to never go to the Hall of Fame. He changed his mind later. You don't get to do that. I'm done. Mm. Okay. okay. Red O. Kenyon, the pressure is on you to prove why Mr. Pete Rose belongs in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Dev, let him know when to go. Although baseball is not guilty of discrimination, it has a diversity problem. Baseball is overwhelmingly white. This is a societal problem in America, and that reality is why Pete Rose should be reinstated into baseball. The societal problem that I'm speaking of is white privilege. You've got stop and frisk, you've got racial profiling, You've got deaths at the hands of guns, uh, at, the hand, at the hands and guns of police. You have income inequality. You have mass incarceration. You have the lack of educational resources. You have the creation of ghettos and the suppression of the development of these communities. You have gentrification, lack of employment opportunity. These are all foreign problems to most, if not all, white Americans. It's white privilege. The great American exception. So why not have a very white American sport in baseball pile on with one more exception, one more display of privilege? Rule 21 in baseball is clear and unequivocal. But Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, undoubtedly one of the greatest baseball players ever by any measure, should be allowed in because he said sorry. Because he really is sorry. Because he... Well, because he's a white guy playing a white man's game in a white man's system. Let him in. It's white privilege, baby. Uh, let's not forget the ball is also white. I was side-eyeing you the whole time. That's why I turned to the I, side. I forgot what we were debating. <laughs> hey, did they take the same side? Uh, somebody got Kevin, a soapbox. Kevin went with it. Your fault. <laughs> <laughs> this is all your fault. Kevin. Hey, Omar. Yes. Sir. That's exactly what I texted Kevin. <laughs> I said this is going to be your yeah. fault. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, man. Well. <laughs> what you going to do, Les? <laughs> <laughs> Who won the argument, Les? <laughs> I'm going to vote 
against white privilege <laughs> <laughs> and go with Omar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Omar wins so, because of white so, privilege. So <laughs> Kenyon won also. <laughs> that was his argument. <laughs> hey, it was a tie. <laughs> Actually, we won. <laughs> right. Oh, oh shit. Mm. Uh, that was awesome. That was that was that was hilarious. <laughs> we should have held this one in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> straight up. <laughs> oh, shout out to Adam Jones. Oh man! All right, we gonna get to diplomatic immunity. Yes. Got a uh, question from Mr. Blackman, um, which so. is which is actually good question. Um, if Pete Rose gets in, does that mean Barry Bonds, Mark Ooh. McGuire, anyone from the steroid era gets in? can of worms uh well yeah. that is a can of worms um i think the difference is i mean first of all to answer this question yes if pete rose gets in you have to let at at a minimum barry bonds get in because barry bonds was never caught <laughs> or anything he just is under a cloud of suspicion yep. pete rose broke the most sacred rule not only in baseball but in sports like yeah actually my my um four argument if i would have got the four argument for p rose is that it, it's not the the hall of perfect it's the hall of fame you put that on their plaque because he still is the hit leader in baseball correct yes so far. you didn't erase that you can't erase what he did just put him in there and then put it on his plaque that he's a cheater but barry bonds <laughs> put it on the plaque <laughs> well hey <laughs> i mean it's and, actually it's actually a nuanced argument because he's he's, ba he's banned from baseball which is what makes him ineligible for the right. hall of fame it's not the it's not the the gambling right so he would have to be reinstated into baseball to then be eligible which is why i think he's probably going to stay that way because it, it would have to they would have to make him eligible because you're right that argument that makes a hall whole of fame lot of is sense. the history of baseball it makes a whole yeah. lot but he's barry just, bonds is uh, not in there the nba the nfl they do a good job of that they understand that i mean they're not gonna they didn't take oj out the hall of fame right right Right. He didn't have to give back his championship rings. Well, in, in, unless it's NCAA because Reggie Bush does, did not win the Heisman in 2000. Well, we already know how gangster <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> that just didn't happen. Right. Now, that's all we got. So, all right, Good luck, Nick. All right. Well, that will conclude <laughs> confirmation bias. I hope you've been enriched. <laughs> <laughs> Can we change the name to White Privilege? <laughs> <laughs> Please follow us everywhere on social media. Our league handle is at the our handle is at the league AM uh, diplomatic immunity on our website. Uh, liking is cool but sharing is caring, Devin. Yes it <laughs> is. Uh, we'll see you next time. That was awesome.